This is Andrew Stotts of A. Stotts Investment Research looking at world-class benchmarking for the Indonesian company PTPP. And let's take a look at this company a little bit and go into its background. First of all, PTPP was established in 1961 as an Indonesian state-owned enterprise mainly operating in five segments. Construction, EPC, property, precast, and equipment. The company also invests in power plants and infrastructure, but saw no revenue from such enterprises in 2016. Let's look at the stock price and some background information. The market capitalization is about 1.4 billion US dollars with almost $6 million in average daily turnover. So a relatively liquid stock, a beta of about 1.3, slightly more volatile than the market. It's in the industrial sector, and it has a free float of about 49%. Here are some of the stories that are going on at the company right now. First of all, the main revenue contributor is public construction services building high-rise buildings, roads and bridges, dams and irrigation, and power plants. Growth in this segment should be stimulated by the government's infrastructure spending policies. About 80% of PTPP's projects in 2016 and planned in 2017 are for the government or other state-owned enterprises. EPC projects for public and private customers focus on power plants, oil and gas, and mining. Its property development subsidiary, PTPP Property, focuses on mid-priced, high-rise building in suburban areas and was listed in May 2015. Rights issue was finalized in April 2017 and PTPP was fully subscribed at a relatively rich valuation of PPRO's shares. PTPP also has three subsidiaries engaged in precast, concrete manufacturing, construction equipment, and power plant construction. The company plans IPOs for two or three of the above subsidiaries in second half 2017, offering 20 to 35 percent of shares to the public, which could unlock some value. Let's take a revenue breakdown uh, from 2016, and we can see construction about 70 percent, EPC about 13 percent, property 13 percent, precast only about 2 percent, and equipment about 2 percent. So now that we understand this business a little bit better, let's look at the world class benchmarking score of this company. First of all, we want to understand about who is the chairman, or as in, in uh, Indonesia is often called president commissioner. So the chairman recently has been changed from Joko Rujano to Andy Gani Niwi Wea, who is an independent chairman or president commissioner. The guy running the show until March 2015 was Bambang Triwibowo and we can see that a change has happened. We can see Tumiyani started in May 2015. So there's been a substantial change that happened in May of 2015. So really we're talking about 2016 being attributable to the current management. So in the prior 12 months, profitable growth returned to average among large industrial companies worldwide. In this case, it's benchmarked against 1,420 large industrial companies across the world. And what we can see is profitability has been at a 5 since 2013, so a steady 5. Growth improved one step to a 4 in the past 12 months. Asset utilization improved one step, but is still poor at a seven. Profit margin is above average at a four and has been maintained there over the last three periods. Sales growth and margin change were both ranked number three. So you could say that things are getting slightly above average or moving towards it. But not fantastic performance so far, but it's still time for the new management to drive the business forward. You want to see more? Well, just sign up for our free newsletter and get access to more investment knowledge. You'll do that at becomeabetterinvestor.net slash join. I'll see you there.